thank you everyone for staying with us. Uh, I know it's late, but I hope this one is more interested. I know we have been looking for a bunch of code in the last two presentations. Uh, I hope you're not too sleepy for this one. So uh, we, uh, we are from Maysim. Uh, we are going to tell our story of migrating the native app, which is iOS and Android app, to the Flutter, which is probably most of you know already Flutter. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm a software, senior software engineer in Maysim. I've been working in Maysim since 2014. And with me is Farhad. Uh, hi, I'm Farhad. I'm a software engineer, I'm a senior software engineer as Maysim as well. That's me still. Uh, I joined the Maysim 2017 to work on the Maysim iOS app, and later we helped uh, transitioning uh, it to Flutter. Please stay with us till the end of it. At the end of the presentation, we are uh, going to give some free uh, starter packs as a gift, courtesy of our marketing teams. <laughs> so today agenda, we are going to talk about the evolutions of the Maysim app uh, from native to Flutter, and then uh, from, from start actually to Flutter, and then issue that we encountered on native, and then why we are going to Flutter, and what considerations we take before we make decisions. Also, what is the results after the adaptations of Flutter? So probably walking around seems I'm a bit sleepy. Uh, so this is the first time that uh, Amazim app is released. So Amazim was established or founded at 2010. Uh, and then at 6 December 2011, we released our first iOS app. And then uh, three weeks later, about the end of December, we released the Android. And then six years later, we released the hybrid app which is the native app, iOS and Android, plus the React Native. So there's a React Native embedded inside the native app. And now today, we have the Flutter app, uh, three years after the second version, uh, version three, and then it has been going well uh, until today. And I would like to dig deeper into the versions one of the, our app quickly. Uh, this one is pretty basic app, so when the when Amazim was founded in 2010, we didn't try to be the number one in the app. We're just trying to be the number one in the telco industry because we're just starting up. And then the focus is actually trying to serve the customer better. That's why the focus is actually building up the, uh, the customer care here in the Sydney, so local customer care, and then focus on the website. So at 2009, we have the best websites in Australia. We got that award. And then as a result, there's a uh, sales coming in, and then everything goes well. Uh, but then the app itself, the iOS and native, is just sitting back there. No one really updating it. There's always a feature that left behind between the app and the, and the website. Uh, and then uh, just if the website being updated, one of, uh, one of our business or stuff coming into the uh, developers and saying, hey, the, the app needs to be updated because the web just got updated. And that's, that's what happened for six years. Until 2017, so the drive behind this uh, big jump for, to try to focus on the app is actually coming also from the business. At 2015, uh, Maysim is going to, going to public as a public company at, at IXX. And then there's also, uh, there's, as a result, there's a bunch of Investment coming in, there's also at the same time shareholders coming in as well. They have all, all this idea and the drive for us for, to get a big money. Uh, to achieve that target, we have, we expand our business, not only mobile previously, so we expand to three, uh, three another pillar of business, three, three, three different business, uh, energy, NBN, and also devices. So. There are three business coming in at the same time very quick. Uh, as a result, there's a problems. So we have target, but there's a problem as well. The problem, uh, the biggest thing on the native is cost and time to market. We need to build twice iOS and Android. Uh, the iOS and Android has different skills in the developers, so we brought along uh, contractors, we brought along external party, 
external uh, con uh, company as well to help us with this. Uh, I, I don't want to dig deeper into the problems that we encountered, but it's 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 a headache. And then uh, it's slow. Development uh, cycle is slow. The native tools uh, previously doesn't have the reactive rendering on Android. Uh, we need to, as you can see previously, we need to stop, start, compile, build. Uh, even the instrumentation stats is slow. Uh, and then, like a feature policy, also the ability of uh, to scale in terms of uh, speed, in terms of resources, in terms of uh, headcount, it's pretty slow because we need to find a developers as well that have a very specific skill set in the, in the industry. And then uh, moving on to the version uh, three, which is Flutter, and then Fahad we're going to explain more about it. So, first of all, why did we uh, actually choose Flutter? Uh, to be honest, we did uh, have, as uh, native uh, developers, we also had bad experience with uh, React Native. So we were very cautious when we were trying to choose another uh, multi-platform uh, or cross-platform uh, tool. And uh, we started liking uh, Flutter, and as soon as we started hearing about it, the new approach of having the little canvas and uh, start rendering on it uh, uh, seems much better than the working with other class platforms at the time, uh, most of the others, that they were just trying to speak with the native elements uh, on the uh, native elements on the native devices. And <laughs> that uh, uh, gave us uh, more confidence uh, on that because uh, uh, we used to have a lot of problems with uh, other cross platforms. Uh, every time they, for another update, we had to update a lot of other stuff. Also, we found uh, uh, very early on that Flutter is aware of its own limitations and it's very good in turning them to its own capabilities. The biggest example of it is, uh, uh, for example, platform channels to how speak with uh, native and probably pigeon next time uh, we should name it. Uh, dev experience is uh, pretty good in it actually. Uh, the lo uh, Dart uh, language is uh, very easy to understand for most people coming from Kotlin and uh, um, Swift or TypeScript, uh, JavaScript. It's not something that uh, needs a lot of time to understand. Uh, it's also uh, Flutter and Dart team are really good in providing good uh, dev tools on VS Code that we really like and use a lot. It's got very good uh, library management, uh, pop.dev. Uh, uh, very descriptive, uh, lots of uh, libraries, and very helpful. Uh, so uh, native uh, to Flutter transition, it's started, uh, as I said, it started when we started hearing about it, uh, but uh, it actually started when we decided to start a pilot project on it. So we already had a full functioning uh, app and uh, it's not easy to convince uh, business that we, this strategy of moving to cross platform is a good uh, strategy. So as we were developing our normal, had normal development, we uh, allocated a small group to work on a uh, pilot project. And uh, it was just very few, in, kind of MVP, but very important uh, journeys that we really cared and we knew that's uh, where we can spot the problems with the uh, new tools and languages. Uh, all the animations, all the transitions and included as well. So it was a high fidelity pilot project. And at the end of it, uh, it gave us the feeling that we shouldn't have some sort of hybrid in a way that we used to have. Uh, later in our native uh, experience that we had some uh, Flutter pages, uh, uh, some, sorry, uh, React Native pages. We found it that Flutter, at least for us, 
works the best when we had a Flutter page and when we need to speak with native, that's how it works for us. And uh, that's the way we decided to do. So we started after the speaking in our team, got a go no from business as well. And uh, when business bought it eventually, the, we started to reducing our development on the uh, native part while we started to add the feature parity to the uh, new v version three compared to the V2 that we used to have. But of course we needed to uh, address all of the product release and uh, all of the uh, business uh, requested uh, features. Um, also, after we got to the point that we could uh, get to the feature par parity and uh, we still had a bit of a time to have a normal development on uh, the new Flutter app, the V3, to the point that we were confident enough to release it, adding a lot of uh, analytics, uh, monitoring tool, and uh, yeah, the other stuff that we care about, uh, checking it for pen testing and going through all those stuff. And after releasing it still, we had to work also on the old uh, uh, project to do some cleaning up to getting it ready for end of life and uh, archiving it eventually, getting rid of. Well, Michael just explained about uh, the problems uh, we faced before. And uh, actually, um, I just wanted to say how Flutter help us in solving these problems. The biggest thing is single code base. We are, we are a very small lean team. So for us to be able to, uh, uh, instead of splitting our resources in to native, now we are splitting it to nothing. Just all of us working at the same code. Uh, we really like the way that uh, it worked with uh, native. So uh, it helped us uh, to still keep so many of uh, native connections that we do need uh, for so many security or user experience reasons. Uh, keep those available for us. Uh, as of reusability, uh, the best part is the way that it's uh, Flutter works with widgets and uh, described uh, widgets in dot. It's make it for us very um, easy to um, make small components, packages, or something like that, and keep reusing it, and found it uh, very useful for us. I already spoke about the promising library management and all the good toolings it's got. Uh, one of the key uh, things which is we already uh, cared about before, so it's not one of our problems, but one of the bonus points, uh, Flutter uh, had a sound uh, accessibility, not from the very beginning, but uh, pretty early on. They had a very uh, sound uh, accessibility, and that's something that we do care in our company uh, because we want to, our app and tool to be accessible as uh, many people as possible. And I already spoke about the fact that uh, how nice Dart is. Uh, in a sense that it's very readable, very understandable by other developers. So it was very easy for us to bring other devs from other teams that they didn't have any experience on any native apps or any of uh, similar languages, but they could actually pick up uh, Dart and uh, Flutter. Flutter was also very easy to understand. So it was very good to, for us in that sense. So how we do Flutter? That's interesting. We actually breaking apart our project in many different uh, packages. We really like the uh, packages driven programming in small pieces. And each one uh, is getting built separately, although they are on a uh, monorepo, but uh, completely has its own. We use also GitHub Action. Uh, each one uh, built in small portion. And that helps us to save a lot of money, much quicker build time, and a lot of other stuff. And also, we have a design system, so 
We also break apart our uh, UI in small components, the same way as we use all the other uh, models in the small packages that it help us to just grab them and use them whenever we need them. Mm. So it's very quick to develop. And uh, we use platform channels, probably next time it would be Pigeon. Um, <laughs> if it works. <laughs> uh, we use it uh, a lot for a lot of uh, stuff. Uh, some of them also security related that we need to have, but the best example is widgets. It's working gorgeously. Uh, so, so far, what did we learn from uh, working on Flutter for around more than two years' time? Uh, we loved uh, the supportive community that uh, uh, the whole Dart and uh, Flutter supportive uh, community that it's got. The engineers are amazing, accessible. There isn't any question that you cannot find the answer on the Stack Overflow. Uh, it's got a very good uh, performance, actually. Uh, in at least for our use cases, uh, it's pretty much uh, comparable with native. We do use a lot of animations and everything, and tr complicated transitions as well. Uh, but nothing 3D or more complicated stuff. Uh, I already spoke about the how amazing the the, the env uh, environment it is uh, so not going to uh, dig into it too much more than the fact that uh, debugging is really easy in it and reactive rendering is makes it much nicer um, we kind of love uh, golden tests uh, I don't know why we found it much uh, more reliable than snapshot uh, testing that we used to uh, have on um, native and uh, or other instrumentation test on Android and XC UI test on iOS. We found it more reliable, which is a good thing for anything UI related. So as a result, uh, in the last two years, what it happened for us, we are in a smaller team that we used to have, because as Michael uh, mentioned, we brought in many uh, contractors during the uh, native times uh, contingency for uh, big features. But uh, since we released uh, with a small lean team, we are actually two to three times as frequent. Uh, we've got more uh, uh, releases frequently. Uh, we are working less as engineers. That's amazing. Um, we are keep adding the, the features, uh, much more features uh, per each sprint. We have met all of our uh, deadlines, and we haven't had one <laughs> late uh, night uh, work for, because of those deadlines, which is amazing. So, as a result, much happier business, which is important. They pay for us. Much happier engineers. Uh, yeah, um, and more importantly, uh, I mean, the most important thing is the much happier customers. As you can see, the rating of our app from 2.95 got above uh, 4.6, and its remainder never went down. The same side. And the conclusion: uh, it is always. Uh, pretty daunting to transition to a new platform for all of us. We get comfortable with the dev tool that we've been using it. We love it. But if you plan well and uh, get the support and buy-in from the business, you definitely can achieve it. Any questions? Yeah. Um, hi. Yeah, well, <laughs> Thank you. Um, was there anything particularly difficult you found about the migration or the rewrite from native to Flutter? I probably can give an example of the home widgets. Uh, when we tried 
uh, almost three years ago. We kind of one of the pioneer in the Flutter. The now uh, safety is not there. There the accessibility is not there yet. There are a lot of things that not not there yet. Uh, and then so the widgets is actually need something to work behind the scene, while Flutter is ac actually everything foreground. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of things that's really challenging, but. Yeah, we can achieve it. It works. Mm -mm. Um, Follow-up question. If you could give any advice for a team doing a rewrite or a migration, what would it be? Uh, sell it well to your business in first. Uh, plan well. That's the, and uh, don't scare. Try it. Uh, we were both uh, native developers. Uh, we we're very biased towards our native tools, languages. I still whinge about Dart every now and then. I prefer <laughs> Swift. Uh, aside from that, uh, try something different. Just uh, plan it and you can achieve it. That was the conclusion of my <laughs> presentation, actually. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, thank you. Our presentation, sorry. Hi. Just a quick question. Uh, how flexible you were in this journey, migrating from native to uh, Flutter, and did you feel you, you could you know, improve the performance, app performance, or UI, UX? Uh, as if how confident we were in uh, Flutter beforehand? Yep. Nothing. <laughs> Pretty much. No, no, we no. just have one of our developers had uh, started uh, piloting it, and that's uh, as he tried it, he learned it. But none of us had any previous experience in Flutter. Uh, uh, I'm trying to say, uh, to say how flexible you were in, in this journey. Uh, uh, I mean, from both UI, UX. We if you could exactly. add more using Flutter specific features, or you could uh, so when improve we the app performance. The so when we released the uh, first Flutter version, it was exact copy of our native app. Nothing uh, more, nothing less. But after that, of course, we've been adding features, improved uh, its performance. Uh, actually, Flutter released few uh, releases that improved uh, its performance. Pretty much it was a welcoming update. But anything else you can? Yeah, that's it. But no, uh, th there wasn't anything. It was exactly the same. OK, thank you. I have one. <clears throat> so right now, because you migrated to all of them to Flutter, how much is like your PR merging for na native one, like as a percentage, like 40%, 30%? Because you need to cope up with all the SDKs updates. Uh, right? Much less. Much like, less. Do you have any percentage, like 20%? Uh, probably have like 10, 12 uh, platform channels. Yeah, as I, as I had said, we have a lot of platform channels, not only one. So the, the primary one is the home widget, but also we have the eSIM. So there's we 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 are one of the VMNO that actually implement eSIM the first one. So that's eSIM is important at the platform platform channel. Also monitoring data analytics, uh, incidents, a lot of platform channels. But then yeah, they, they are separately in the packages as you can see. So every time there's update in that packages, it's only run that part only. Uh, probably example uh, as before presented. Uh, but yeah. It is something that you just implement and you forget most of the time. There isn't something that you need to maintain continuously the type okay. of the work. It's not noticeable. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you.